Literature Boy, by drowning in work but still. Changing seats in his literature class was a huge drag. Firstly, he was now far away from his friends. Second, he could barely hear their teacher from here. Third, being next to the window made him even more easily distracted by the sights outside. Juro wasn't here to throw paper balls at him to wake him up, and he tended to lose himself in daydreams. Shaking his head, Kaminari tried to tune back into the lesson. Alright class, now we'll be discussing one of the books assigned to you during summer break. Would anyone like to guess the title? A man who's not the main character's father sponsors her education. What does she call them? Daddy. Kaminari froze in his seat. He glanced to his right, where a guy with wild purple hair was doodling on his notebook. Bottom literally dripped off him, and his slight pout and narrowed eyes covered with eye bags. It didn't seem like he spoke. Kaminari must have imagined it or misheard. The voice had been deep and husky, and just recalling it sent a tingle down Kaminari's spine. A few seats in front of them, Ida raised his hand and offered an answer. Daddy Longlegs! That's right, Ida. The rest of the lesson is pretty uneventful, but Kaminari was unable to forget that voice. That voice should be illegal. Just the sound of it could make people do things. Their literature teacher does read-throughs of small excerpts. One of their examination components requires them to critique unseen prose, where they have to analyse the literary devices used in a short excerpt of a novel they're not expected to read. Today, the afternoon sun is covered by white, fluffy clouds, and a gentle breeze drifts in from the window. There was the distant sound of birds, and all of it makes for a perfect afternoon nap. With their teacher's steady cadence, Kaminari found himself slowly dozing off, head nodding. He wasn't the only one. Many students start to doze off after lunchtime, and this class period was unfortunately affected by a group experienced food coma. Can you feel my sword? The teacher yelled, jolting Kaminari awake from his sudden rise in volume. Blearily, he wiped the corner of his lip in case he drooled. No, sire, it's too tiny, his seatmate whispered under his breath. This drew a startled chuckle from Kaminari. He coughed to cover it up, but it was too late. His seatmate was looking at him now. Kaminari stared back into deep purple eyes. Hmm. <laughs> the teacher noticed Kaminari being distracted, and he looked unimpressed. Well, sure, it must look like Kaminari laughed at his enthusiasm. Kaminari, his teacher called. What do you think he felt when he was betrayed? Salty, his unfairly hot seatmate said quietly, in his unfairly beautiful deep voice. His eyes glimmered with amusement. A surprised snort of laughter fell out of Kaminari's lips before he could stop himself. Kaminari, what's the answer? Kaminari sat upright, realizing he was still in class. So... He cut himself off just in time, blinking furiously. Uh, bitter and angry, <laughs> yeah. That's correct. Appeased by Kaminari's answer, the teacher continued to read the passage. Kaminari breathed a sigh of relief and sunk down into his seat. He glanced back to the boy next to him. Mr. Eyebags was looking at their teacher and... God damn it! That hot zombie literature boy was smirking under his palm. When he blinked, his long eyelashes fluttered beautifully. Fuck. Kaminari stared down at his notebook, flushed. This wasn't happening. He wasn't getting a crush.
Okay, it was a crush. His name is Shinzo Hitoshi, Ashido said, the next day during lunch. Their group always sat together for meals. They were an odd group of five. Him, Ashido, Sarah, Kirishima, and Bakugo looked like they all belonged in different cliques. They'd always been together since middle school, though, and remained together even in college. I heard he was suspended a semester for fighting. He's bad news, haven't you looked at him? He could probably choke you to death, Sarah added, exchanging looks with Ashido. You should stay away from him. Well, maybe Kaminori wanted to be choked to death. He pouted, pushing food around on his plate. And dear lord, his friends knew what it meant. I mean it, Denki! Ashido shrieks under her breath. He has tattoos and this biker gang sort of vibe. You're too... you for him. What does that even mean? Kaminari whined, stabbing at a strawberry. Rumors are often exaggerated, guys, Kirishima said soothingly, giving Kaminari a supportive look. God, this is why Kaminari was his best friend. He could be a really nice guy. Bro. Kaminari sniffled, leaning into Kirishima. Sarah rolled his eyes, huffing. There's no smoke without fire. Listen to your friends, Kaminari. You know we've saved you multiple times from crushing on dickheads. Kaminari wanted to say that this time was different. But honestly, he didn't even know Shinzo's name before today, and all he would have was a flimsy argument of I don't feel bad vibes, and his bad vibes detector was apparently way off based on his past experiences. I'll be careful, okay? He mumbled. And his friends sighed. Kaminari was too stubborn sometimes. Call me when it's time to punch him. Bakugo said doubtfully, stood up with his food tray, leaving their group like he always did once he was done. He always had additional club activities during lunch, a fucking jock. You won't have to, Kaminari hollered after him. Ugh, they'd all be proven wrong with time. Kirishima patted Kaminari on the shoulder. The next few weeks were painful. Ever had a crush on someone attractive that you're not supposed to have a crush on? And having to see them every week? Yeah, it's that. Kaminori couldn't stop himself from laughing at every innuendo or joke Shinzo makes every class. That's the worst part. He's kind of sure those jokes weren't meant for him. He didn't even know if Shinzo knew his name. The dear lord. This boy. With his handsome face, slender fingers, deep voice, mesmerizing eyes, the greatest sense of humor. Oh, no. He was staring, abort mission. He needed to look away before Shinzo noticed him being a creep. Kaminari felt his cheeks and ears burn. Shit, why was he so weak? He covered his face with his hands and screamed silently into them. All right. Before the next class, find someone to partner up with. Class dismissed. Oh, these classes were way too short. Kaminari had to wait until next week to see Shinso again. Wait, find a partner? The dumbest, most compelling of urges overwhelmed him. Biting his lip, he glanced towards Shinso, who was shoving his books into his bag. Oh god, was he really doing this? It was a great chance, though. He didn't notice Shinzo speak up to anyone else in their class. If you can count his jokes to himself a conversation with Kaminari. This was his chance to get to know Shinzo better and prove them all wrong. Gathering up his courage, he stood up, poking Shinzo on the shoulder. Wait, god, is that too lame a way to get his attention? But it was too late now, Shinzo was looking at him. Oh, God, say something, Kaminari. Hey, uh... Kaminari swallowed. His voice sounded foreign to himself, 
trembling and higher pitched than it usually was. Do you maybe want to p- pair up for the assignment? To his ultimate surprise, Shinzo smiled at him. Oh my god, it was a smile and not a smirk, and he looked so nice and kind. Shit, was Kaminari blushing and staring right now? No! That's a surprise. I wanted to pair up with you as well. Shinzo chuckled under his breath. Really? Kaminari blotted that out before he could even think it through. Too excited that Shinzo wanted anything to do with him at all. God, he was such a loser. Stay calm, play it cool. I mean, you're always laughing at what I say. We must have a similar sense of humor. Shinzo replied in a low voice. Kaminari strained to catch all his words. The vibrations of his voice made Kaminari feel tingly. Can't wait to see what else we have in common. Oh no, there it was. The smirk that damned Kaminari to a crush. How could someone have such a perfect face? The slope of his nose, his defined cheekbones. Damn, how was Shinso Hitoshi not a model? Wait, was Shinso Hitoshi hitting on him? Uh, Kaminari said intelligently. Shinso's smirk grew wider. He stood up too and, oh wow, Shinso was almost an entire head taller than him. That was kind of hot, actually. Give me your number, said the hottest guy in class. Kaminari scrambled to get his phone. They managed to exchange numbers, and Kaminari honestly could not remember if they said anything else because he was so nervous. It was only when he got home that he realized he managed to get Shinso's number. That they were going to work together for a project. For a month. He squealed on his bed, hugging his phone to his chest. Dreams come true. His phone buzzed with a message, and he fumbled and flailed with his phone. When he eventually got his grip from it, he saw that it was from Shinso. (coughs) Shinso, meet at my house tomorrow. Oh shit. Oh shit. He's already going to Shinzo's house? What was he supposed to wear? What should he reply? Like, okay, yeah, it would be a Saturday and he would be hella free, but he didn't want to come off as desperate or overenthusiastic. He would ask his friends what to reply, but then they would get all on his case about being partners with Shinzo and how they told him to stay away from trouble. Would Shaw with three exclamation marks sound too enthusiastic? Yeah, that's way too many exclamation marks. Kaminari. Sure, uh, time and location? Okay, yeah, that sounded chill. Go Kaminari. Shinzo replied immediately. Oh god, why did he text so fast? Kaminari needed time to think. Attached was a Google Maps location and a whenever. Dear lord, going to his crush's house right after getting his number? Did Shinzo have siblings? Pets? Were his parents going to be home? Ah! He got up from his bed and looked through his closet. Okay, he had to look good, but not like overdoing it. Kind of like he dressed up, but he didn't do it on purpose. A chill kind of look. A hoodie should do. Wait, did he have to bring a gift? It was going to be his first time over, so maybe? Shit, he really needed advice. Shinzo didn't seem like the type to care, but, well, who knows? It could do him good to give a good impression to Shinzo's parents. Okay, no, he was getting ahead of himself here. What time would be good? Oh shit, what if he would be eating meal with Shinzo's family? Should he offer to do the dishes? Dear lord... Well, with Shinzo's eye bags, he didn't seem like a morning person, so after lunch should be good? Kaminari. Okay, see you at 2pm. Shinzo, want me to pick you up at the train station? Shit, that reply was way too quick and way too suave. Kaminari could already imagine it, walking out of the train station to see Shinzo leaned against a wall. 
waiting. Dressed in ripped jeans and a band t-shirt, earphones in as he scrolled on his phone with a cat cover. And when Kaminari approached him, Shinzo would lift his face and then their eyes would meet and his heart was already fluttering. How was he going to survive the entire day with Shinzo? Kaminari told Shinzo he would go to his house directly, because that gave Kaminari time to pick a gift for his first visit, and also time to calm his rapidly beating heart. Now, he was standing in front of Shinzo's apartment, hand over his chest as he tried to steady his breath. Okay, yeah. Here goes nothing. He pressed the doorbell. Moments later, he heard soft padded footsteps, and the door opened to show Shinzo with messier hair than usual. The purple haired boy was dressed in cat pattern pajamas and fuzzy cat slippers. His eyes were half lidded and lazy, like he'd just woken up. Okay, wow, this was amazing, in a totally different way from what Carmen I imagined. Hey. That one word itself was enough to undo all of Kaminari's efforts in composing himself. He flinched, staring at Shinzo for a few moments, before realizing Shinzo was looking curiously at what was in his hands. I didn't know what to buy, so I, uh, I brought Starbucks? Kaminari lifted the paper bag. Shit, was he blushing? He didn't know, but it felt so warm. Shinzo's eyes widened. His jaw slackened. Kaminari wasn't sure if that was a good sign or not. Shit, I love you right now. Shinzo gushed, pushing the door open even wider, gesturing for Kaminari to come in. Okay, make that a very good sign. Kaminari struggled to take off his shoes at the entryway, but Shinzo waited patiently eyes constantly drifting to the carrier. Um, I didn't know what type of coffee you liked, so I got both an iced Americano and a caramel macchiato, Kaminari said sheepishly. Both. I love all types of coffee, Shinzo said breathlessly. His coffee addiction was coming across loudly right now. It was kind of cute. Kaminari handed the bag over. <laughs> you can pick. Shinzo spent a full minute staring into the bag after they settled down at the table. Kaminari watched with amusement. It looked like Shinzo was making one of the hardest decisions of his life, until the iced Americano was taken out. Sipping on each of their drinks, they looked over their assignment worksheet. They could pick a few topics to research on and then present it to the class. Some were pretty vague, like, how has the depiction of power changed in literature? How about this one? Shinzo leaned closer, and Kaminari's heart stuttered. How has the language of love changed over time in literature? Sounds good, Kaminari squeaked. Shinzo started up his laptop, and they sat side by side as they first looked through Google. They decided it would be best to arrange them by time periods. Middle English, Hurtus wrote. Meaning my heart's root. Culver, meaning dove. My heart's gleam. Kaminari fidgeted, feeling strangely warm, as Shinzo listed the terms of endearment in the quiet room. He was suddenly hyper-aware of the way their thighs touched. Shinzo's voice tickled his left ear. He was pretty sure he was blushing, and he hoped Shinzo wasn't looking at him. Sweetheart is from the 17th century. Let's see. Darling, babe. Shinzo suddenly paused. Kaminari didn't dare to look up. Which of these do you like most, Kaminari? Um, Kaminari panicked. I, I like... He made the unfortunate mistake of looking at Shinzo. Shinzo smiled knowingly at him, his eyes alight with mischief. He looked too pleased, like a cat that got the cream. If Kaminari wasn't blushing before, he sure as hell was now. 
Her face was unfair. You, Kaminari ended up saying. Then he immediately slapped his hands over his mouth, because what the hell did he just say? Shinzo laughed in surprise, and honestly it was adorable. Kaminari wanted to dig a ditch and die in it now, thanks. Now Shinzo was going to be weirded out, and he'll avoid Kaminari forever. Shinzo must see the expression on Kaminari's face, because he's quick to explain. Sorry, sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I knew that. It's just, I was asking about what term of endearment you like. Calling you, you would hardly be appropriate. You knew? Kaminari gaped. You're not exactly the most subtle. Shinzo snorted, sipping on his Americano. But it's cute. Cute. Kaminari made a dying noise in the back of his throat, collapsing on the table and hiding his face. Since it's the 21st century, wanna be my bae? Shinzo laughed, shaking his head. Oh god, our ancestors would be so disappointed in all of us. They had all those fancy terms of endearment. Kaminari turned his head to watch Shinzo, who was actually blushing and chewing on the straw of his drink. He thought Shinzo was all suave and confident. He didn't expect the other boy to be nervous. It was kind of cute. Actually, Kaminari was in so deep, everything about Shinzo was cute. But it means before anyone else. I think that's pretty sweet. Kaminari said softly. Meaningfully. He swallowed when their eyes met. He felt the spark. Felt the undeniable attraction. Shinzo's eyes softened, and he smiled sweetly. Bay, He's bay material. I'm waiting for my answer. Shinzo reminded him gently. Fuck yes, Kaminari whispered, making Shinzo laugh again. His own smile tugged at his lips. You know, I heard a lot of rumors about you. Like, you having tattoos. Is that true? Shinzo rolled up his sleeves. Stay away from Shinzo Atoshi, they said. He's bad news, they said. He has tattoos, they said. It's a tattoo of a black cat, on the inside of his wrist. Shinzo was just full of surprises. I got it in memory of my childhood cat, Princess, Shinzo said fondly, tracing the black design. She died when I entered high school, when she was 18. Shinzo was so fucking soft. Kaminari was so fucking soft for him. He reached out with his hand to touch the tattoo, brushing over Shinzo's smooth skin. It was a really meaningful tattoo. Kaminari wished he could have met Princess. He slid his hands over Shinzo's, intertwining their fingers. It's a nice tattoo. I'm thinking of getting another tattoo, actually, Shinzo said thoughtfully, squeezing Kaminari's hand. Yeah? Kaminari hummed, showing he was listening. Yeah, a little thunderbolt over my heart, just for you, because you like thunderstorms. Kaminari flushed at the suave smile Shinzo was sending his way. He loved his dorky boyfriend. God, what were all those rumors going on about? Biker gang? Mafia goon? Killed a man? Shinzo Atoshi was chuckling at him while wearing a giant cat hoodie. I love you, cheesy boy. I love you too, babe. <laughs>